life of a hunter. It's not about an end result, it's about an expedition. A journey that leads us into wild places, both near and far. In a time where some believe hunting is not relevant to modern society, we carry the torch and stand on the foundations of those that have come before us. We continue to invest into the ecosystems of which we must sustain. It's an effort to conserve, to provide, and celebrate God's renewable resources. Hey, 380 plus. It is our life. It is our passion. And we make no apologies for our God-given right to hunt. Kansas is a state that has been known to produce some of the biggest whitetails in the country. Mark and Kenneth are no stranger to these deer and have been enjoying the opportunities this state provides for several years. While Kenneth's Kansas season usually starts in November, this year he was able to hunt during the early muzzleloader season with his expedition. All right, I'm gonna make this legal. Let me sign this. We are officially hunting in Kansas. Let's go shoot one. Big bean field right here. Corn planted right there. It's about 82 degrees, pretty warm. Deer probably not gonna move till late, but we got some big and J up here and got a little winter wheat planted coming up, so maybe they'll move. Probably gonna be late though before they do, but we in a stand anyway. It's always fun strapping this thing on for the first time of the year. It's September in Kansas, which is something I'm not used to doing. I usually hunt out here in November, but we found out that uh, you can hunt with uh, a bow during the muzzleloader season. So Mark had a muzzleloader tag, and I just so happened to have a bow tag. Well, I wasn't going to let him uh, come out here and outdo me, so I decided to come out here with my bow. The warm temperatures of September were keeping the deer movement limited to the first and last moments of the day. No matter the temperatures, Kenneth decided to grind out the heat in hopes of catching a shooter on his feet in the daylight. We, uh, we're fixing to go uh, try a new spot. Got some big and jay out. Got some pictures of some big deer in there. Hopefully old Popper or Mark A to show up in there. I don't understand why they call Mark's eight my Mark Mark's eight when he's actually a nine. Dan, why do you do that? Chris, why would y'all do that? I don't get it, but it don't matter. I still shoot him. And Mark's not hunting him. Yeah, and Mark's not hunting him. So why is he marked? Why can't he be Kennelly's Ken Ken nine? Let's, we're changing the name, Mark. We're just not going to tell you till after we shoot him. <laughs> southeast wind to come in here and hunt it. We got the wind today, so we are, uh, we're gonna give it a shot. As the shooting stopped and their shooter nowhere in sight, Kansas season in Kansas 
unknown at the time, would be over. The Given Right is being brought to you by Expedition Archery, Element Outdoors, Realtree, CVA, Hornady, Bare Bones Outdoors, Victory, and Trophy Tree Stands. The week before returning to Kansas, Kenneth had come in contact and tested positive for COVID-19. Because he was unable to make the trip, Mark's longtime friend and VP of Expedition Land Management, Chris Van Gerpen, had the opportunity to join him hunting during the rut. It's Halloween here in Kansas. It's 70 degrees. The reason that I'm not wearing much. Uh, something's got to give today. is not good for us actually up into the 80s on Wednesday or Thursday so the rut hasn't fully kicked in it's right on the edge it's here it can happen at any moment but the warm weather might push it back till next week but we're gonna grind it out never know deer out in front of him. Just not the right buck. It's been tough. 
been real tough. 75 degrees in November is not the greatest weather in Kansas to be hunting anything. The Given Ride is being brought to you by Scrape Fix, PFC, Bone Collector Game Calls, Lethal, Sig Sour, Insights, Dry Shot, and Texas Trophy Hunters. Riding through this warm spell, we have five days of 70 plus temperatures, actually close to 80 a couple days. We have a beautiful 180 inch plus deer, just I don't know what it's going to score, but it's pretty big. It's got a tight frame, but it's got a lot of points and he showed up here last night, actually still shooting late last night, and he walked right through the middle of this food plot, so that's why we're perched here today, and uh, hopefully he does the same thing he did last night. As the evening progressed, deer began to flood into the field. While scanning the field, they recognized that their target buck had stepped out right at last light. That's it. Yeah. Look at him right now, his head's up. You think that's him? It looks a lot here. By the time this deer had made it into bow range, it had gotten too dark for Mark to shoot. The next few days of hunting were eventful for Mark. He spent them bouncing between tree stands during the morning hunts and back to the box blind where he encountered this buck. After no more encounters with this specific deer, Mark shifted his focus back into the same area where he had started his archery season. As daylight broke on the morning of the 10th, Mark found himself 15 yards from one of his target deer. somebody talked to. I've been talking to Curtis for 10 days. Oh, Come on, Curtis. Talking? Hello, Kenley. Hey, Nobody wants to talk to me this morning. It's five till seven. What the heck? It's during the run. They know what I'm calling for. I wonder if my mom and dad will pick up. <laughs> Mr. Lancaster, did I wake you up? <laughs> no. I, yeah, oh, Curtis and I, Curtis and I had a bet we're here on camera, but I don't have a uh, an iPhone, so I'm not as fancy as you guys, you millennials. So I gotta use the old Droid. But uh, I have a lighted knock in the in the field there, sticking straight in. That's what I'm talking about. I, Which one is it? I think it's Element, dude. It is miserable here. I told you I wanted a weather change, and it yeah. worked. The first day, the weather, the front came through. It worked, but uh, it is ugly. It's 31 degrees, raining and wind, and 
hey, Curtis tapped me on the shoulder. There's a deer. I looked down and I was like, oh my goodness. <laughs> All right, we're going to get out of this because I'm getting soaked. <laughs> Talk to you, brother. Later. Oh, yeah. That's what we like to see, don't we? A bloody arrow. <laughs> we're going to head out. It's ugly and it's supposed to rain a little bit more. We're pretty sure he was doing the... Uh, Stinky legs up on top of the hill there in the CRP. So we're gonna back out, give it an hour just for the heck of it, go back and look at the video and then uh, come back in. So pretty stoked though, pretty stoked. <laughs> we're actually doing this backwards because we think he fell in the uh, CRP up here or trees over there, but we saw him right on the top of this ridge here and it looked like he was gonna fall over. So we're gonna start backwards. It's blood here, right? Where'd the blood go? <laughs> you think it went to the left, so do I. <laughs> oh man, look, the coyotes got to him already. <sighs> man, he stiffened up on me already. The given ride is being brought to you by Reveal Swagger. Vision Bikes, Tacticam, Thorn Broadheads, Big and J, Crescent, and Caveman Gear. After 13 straight days of bow hunting, Mark finally got to put his hands on a deer in the state of Kansas. Got in there, we thought it was Element, which is our number two deer here on the farm. And uh, to be honest with you, he snuck in on us. We had no clue he was, he was there. I, we, we're looking out in the field, I have a binoculars looking at a doe, or a buck up there running a doe. And um, it was Ocho, we think, and so we were looking at him, and Curtis just happened to look back, and says, Mark, buck, 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 is right below us. Big, heavy, mass deer. Nice character kickers here. Look at that. <laughs> coyotes got to him. We've only been going for two and a half hours, and uh, the coyotes already got to him. We heard him howling over there with uh, 13 days here in Iowa, or Kansas. 13 days in Kansas here. Uh, the weather was horrific the last six days. It's 80 degrees, uh, 20, 25 mile an hour winds. It broke yesterday, and as soon as it broke, we saw five bucks this morning in less than an hour. And uh, he came through, and I didn't even hesitate, to be honest with you. I thought it was a different deer, but to be honest, I probably would have shot this one anyway. So, Kansas does it again. Yes. <laughs> with Mark's buck tagged and loaded up, it was time for Chris to head back out and finish his hunt in Kansas. Come on, that's good shot. I think it was like 
like center mass. Well, we watched a deer come over here. He fell. He finally put his head down. So we know he's down. It is a very easy and very enjoy enjoyable track job. So let's get down and we'll go check him out. I told you to hit that tree. It didn't quite stick in, but it got close. It's always awesome to put a bloody arrow in the quiver. This is day too many to count. It's easier to count weeks. I think I'm on week number two, middle of that week anyway, maybe three. <laughs> and it's just been hard. It's been windy, it's 65 degrees right now. Uh, it, it's just been difficult. They haven't been moving very much. Finally, we're able to connect on a deer. And it's a good one. The 2020 Kansas archery season will not soon be forgotten. The unseasonably warm temperatures and unforeseen sickness wrecked every plan that was put in place. For Mark and Chris, their patience was tested. In the end, they were rewarded for their work. These are the moments we live for, and we will never ever apologize for our God-given right to hunt. I shot Kenneth's deer, and I enjoyed it very much. Thank you, Kenneth. Thank you for being ill. Ha, ha, ha.